Hey, everybody, welcome back to Success Secrets Revealed. I hope you all had a great weekend and your month of July is starting off well. Uh, today, we have a special guest here with us today, Jason Freeman, and he's going to talk to us about learning how to not be, learning about being okay with being our imperfect self. And I'll let him go into more detail about that. But first, I want to let you know about how this show got started. I have a radio show called Internet Marketing and Business Solutions with Ronald Kuming, but because of COVID, they stopped manning the station physically, so they're just doing reruns. I didn't want to stop contributing to business owners and entrepreneurs by bringing on such wonderful guests, uh, just like Jason and many others. So I created this show. I'm going to take the audio. I'm going to send it to the radio station. They're going to send it out in, in, at some point in some rotation. But you guys get to hear current experts, and uh, you get some value now. And somewhere in the future, you'll get to hear these again. Uh, so that's how that happened. Now, my guests don't get paid to be on the show. I don't get paid to be on the show. Everybody's here just to give back and, and try to help business owners and entrepreneurs. It's just our way of, of giving back. Uh, but the show does have a sponsor. That sponsor is my company, RCS Online Solutions. And basically, we help business owners attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients. The bottom line is if they can't find you when they're searching for their products, services, or solutions, then they can't consider you or even hire you. No one's searching for your name or your company's name. So if you come up on the first page for your name or your company's name, they're not really searching for that. If they are, they're just calling you or they're typing your name in, right? They're searching for a solution or a product or a service. They don't know who has that. That's what they type in. That's what you need to come up for on the search engines. And that's what we do. And we basically guarantee it to a point where you don't pay us until you get the results that we um, promised you. Now, enough about that. Let's get to the good stuff. We have uh, Jason Freeman with us today. I met Jason several years ago at Habitude Warrior Conference. And you, once you start listening to him and hearing his story and how he started and the things he went through, what he's accomplished, and how he embraces being awkwardly awesome, you're going to love him. So here's a little bit of a bio. Jason Freeman's goal is to speak to millions to inspire them to bra bravely persevere towards their goals and dreams. Birth trauma left Jason with a pronounced speech impediment and coordination difference. For years, he struggled with feeling surrounding, <coughs> feeling surrounding his disabilities. In the last decade, he has taken countless, countless steps that have transformed how he experiences life and what he offers the world. Jason doubled majored in English and social work at Augusta, Augusta uh, College and has a master's of fine arts and poetry. He currently, he currently is a, uh, he currently is a professional speaker and perseverance coach residing in San Diego, California. He is the author of Awkwardly Awesome, Embracing My Imperfect Best and has given a TED Talk talk entitled the imperfect ted talk talk imagine that help me welcome jason freeman yay hey thanks for having me ron ah thank you for sparing some time for us jason how's everything going in san diego it's such a beautiful place um yeah yeah actually i i moved back to south dakota no ocean here but it's still beautiful yeah, probably a lot less taxes too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you don't have to worry. I think I don't know about their their climate stuff, but I one the two things that really worried me about California was the taxes and the earthquakes. So uh, hopefully, where you are now, there's no earthquakes. Yeah, the it's feeling pretty stable here. <laughs> <laughs> and let, hopefully, we didn't jinx anything for anyone. But uh, Jason, no. I, I, I read your bio. I've known you for years. We met at Habitude Warrior Conference, and uh, that's such a great conference put on by uh, Eric Swanson for people like yourself, like me, back then when we were starting out in our speaking gigs. And, uh, you know, it's really where a lot of hot centered uh, people are go and speak and learn. But um, tell us more about who you are and what you do and, and how you got to this point in your life. Sure. Thanks, Ron. So, um, 
many, many people are de dealing with challenges right now. Um, life has taken, obviously, many unexpected unexpected times in the past few months. Well, my life started out with an unexpected time and a challenge. Um, I, I came a few weeks early and I surprised my parents in the middle of the night. Surprise! When I was born and luckily they got me to the emergency room in time, but uh, in the process, my umbilical cord was kinked like a garden hose, which makes it hard for me to say the word umbilical. As a result, I have a, a voice uniqueness and a coordination uniqueness. Yep. Uh, but thank God, at least, you know, you're, you're still with us. Yeah, uh, thank gosh. I kind of died at birth. Yeah. And now, Bo, I mean, I've heard you speak about how during your life, how that has affected you. And then now in the last 10, 15 years or so, uh, you've gone on to not only overcome it, but actually help many others who might have similar situations. So, so for much of my life, I, I didn't want this unexpected challenge as, as part of my life. I was like, why me? I was... I didn't even have a chance this all happened at birth, but in the last 10 years, I, I started embracing the challenge of being me. And when I embraced the challenge I ha have to work with, my life opened up in a dramatic and exponential way. I love it. And that's uh, giving presentations, speeches, writing books. You got a double major in English. I mean, I I, I have trouble with uh, there, there, and there, and two, two, and two, and which, which is which, and whether it's <laughs> W-E-A-T-H-E-R or W-E-T-H-E-R. And, you know, the, the, there's this thing called the uh, Oxford Common or semicolon or something. I don't even know what it is, but I always hear people refer to it. I, I, I would have to Google that, but you got a double major in English, huh? English, and so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a master's in poetry, so you've turned. But now, I mean, you, you've had these things, and they came to you at birth. You didn't ask for them. You know, it, it, it was super unfortunate. Uh, but you, and you were, you know, bullied and picked on for it. And now, but you've gone on and created a, you know, uh, a whole positive life for yourself where you've written books and gone out and given presentations. Do you want to talk a little bit about, like, some of the stuff you went through, the uh, what what helped you overcome, uh, I don't want to say being a victim, but just sitting back and taking it to now where you are, you, you know who you are, you're comfortable in who you are, you're writing books and you're going out there and, and you're helping people. There was a time that something switched in you where you went from taking it to accepting it and excelling with it. So, so after I had completed my my master's degree, I I I was like, this should be the happiest day of my life, but I just was still content being my my or still discontent being myself. I didn't feel successful, and and I was um pacing around my my home and and wearing a hole in the floor and finally I remember that that my aunt and uncle had told me a few months before Jason you should try yoga and at the time I'm like no I don't do yoga I have cerebral palsy but um but this day I was so desperate that I took a tiny step. I went down to the YMCA and bought a thirty-five dollar membership with the intention of doing yoga. I didn't even do yoga the first day, but that tiny step started me down a new path, a new trajectory. Nice. So it started as simple as uh, yoga, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very simple. 
Yeah, and uh, but that was good. Somebody gave you some advice and you took it. So now, once you started doing yoga, what what happened from there? Um, yo yoga gave me more confidence, and uh, eventually, I found myself speaking to an audience, and and the audience just breathed. Less. I gave them my best, and they gave me that best, and they just breathed life into the the stream I had to to really embrace my challenge and become all I could be. Excellent, I love it. Now, tell us some of the things that that you've become. I mean, we know that you've gotten some uh, degrees, but what else are you doing? You're doing the TED talks and. Uh, you're going out and you're speaking at Habit to Warrior Conference as well as other places. And uh, tell us how how you're how you're helping. You're a bravery coach, and also how people can contact you. Uh, what is it that you do for business now? I, I've done over a hundred talks so far. My my main business is uh, uh, speaking and 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 being being a coach. And and I I just want to help people focus on turning their challenges into opportunities instead of um, resisting their challenges and thinking well, life life should be perfect. I mean. It'd be great sometimes if life was perfect, but it's just not. So I say, they do do your imperfect best. Give life your best, but when imperfections happen, instead of letting them stop you, um, allow them to propel you forward. Allow them to teach you the next step in your career. That's huge. Uh, in your business. That's huge. And that's so important. And that's kind of like what I was going to ask you. If somebody is going through life now with some uh, challenges uh, in their business or in their personal life, what are some things that they can do specifically uh, uh, to start the process of overcoming um, that negative feelings or those I'm not good enough feelings or something that will help them then, you know, start moving forward towards um, being more like you. Okay, the, the first step is to accept a challenge. Accept the challenge. As, as humans, we have unlimited capacity to deny our challenges. I for years I tried to deny I had a speech impediment. And the the second step is to notice how you're looking at uh, at your challenge, um, and and then start thinking about looking at it in a new way. And then ask yourself what what's one small step. I can take towards the the ch challenge. It doesn't have to be the the correct step. It doesn't have to be the perfect step. The reason I'm here is I went to the YMCA and I bought a thirty five dollar membership. Didn't even do yoga that first day, but that imperfect tiny step changed things. So. So it's like any any problem, you just have an opportunity to experiment and find what what works, and and keep going and keep learning from the mistakes, because the only way a challenge won't change is if you quit, if you quit working on it, if you just say this is the way my life is. It's, it stinks, but there's nothing to do. It won't change. But, but, but as humans, we have so much power. We grew up from babies. We learn to walk and talk and all these things. We have power to transform. I love it, man. I love it. 
and, and think about it. I mean, so many people have been born, uh, whether, I mean, in your case, it was uh, a, an imbalance, a, a physical imbalances and uh, a speech impediment. But I mean, how many people were born perfectly, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, economically, uh, edu you know, in, in, in the right environment? You know, Jim Rohn talks about, you know, it's not what happens to you, you know, it's because that pretty much happens to everybody. It might be slightly different, different neighborhood, different person, different something. But, you know, the feelings, the emotions, the setbacks, all that is, it pretty much happens to everybody else in one form or another. Mm -hmm. But what the difference is what we do with it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love what you said. I mean, we all get a, a lot of men of of unique challenges in life. It's just <laughs> what we do with it. Yep. <laughs> yep. And and a good friend of mine and ours both, uh, Bob Donnell. Now I don't think he. Uh, I, I've heard this quote before, but he said it to me most recently, and it stuck in more so probably because I heard it from a friend. But uh, he talked about just when when we can shift a frame of mind, right, mm -hmm. and, and little shifts. So instead of saying I have to, and he, I think the example he gave was about going to the gym. Uh, so if you're lying in bed and you're thinking about I have to get up and I have to go to the gym, it now becomes such a burden. You know what I mean? I have mm. to get up. I have to get dressed. I have to go to the gym. I have to come back. I have to take another shower. I have to wash the clothes. I have to do this. I have to do that. But if you change your frame of mind and just say I get to go to the gym mm. today, or whatever it is, that shift in mindset mm changes your perception, changes the attitude and the energy in which you bring to the situation. So I think a lot of things are, are, are about um, how we perceive things and, and how we uh, allow them to affect us. Am I correct in that? Oh, oh yeah, from my experience, you know, I, at one point in life, I hated this voice. I was, I was the biggest bully to, to myself that I ever ever had to myself but but now now i'm i'm getting paid good money to speak around the country with the same voice i used to hate nice but, good for you so you turned what you perceived to be a liability into an asset now it be, it becomes an asset it opens doors for you you changed your mindset from this is a, you know, crippling. This is a disability. Mm. This is a not as good as, mm. and now it's turned into a key for you. You've gone on and spoken over a hundred times. You've given TED Talks. You've written books. You've coached people. You, you, you're making a career out of helping other people who think that something they have or do is a disability or is imperfect and changing that and, and just using what you have to the best. I love it. it is, it's funny you, you mentioned Bob Dinell. He says as a joke, joke that I should create programs teaching speakers how to have speech impediments because when I get up <laughs> on stage, everyone has to listen, clo listen closer so they hear a higher percentage of what I have to say, say pro probably I've never done a research study on it, but I would, I would guess. Yeah, it Maybe. makes sense. It makes sense because if somebody's speaking and they have somewhat of an impediment, first of all, I'm going to stop and listen to them because sometimes when you, you have other speakers and they're perfectly polished, you know, you know, sometimes you're, you know, you it kind of just it's not, you know, it's, you just don't feel the authenticity. When someone like you gets up there, I mean, you can feel the authenticity and you can like, man, this dude's so brave to get up there. What does he have to say? So people now start to pay more attention. But, and because they're paying more attention, what they're, uh, you know, remembering, retaining and taking away from it uh, is probably, yeah, significantly higher than uh, hearing somebody else. I think they, they say people here remember like 20 percent of what they hear. But as Bob said, in your case, it might be 40 or 50 percent the first time around. You know what I mean? And then the second and third time, it just uh, increases. Uh, do you you do have a book? What's the name of your book? 
awkwardly awesome embracing my imperfect breast. And it's a cross between an autobiography, but also it asks the audience to interact with it. There's questions in it for, not the audience, the, the reader. There's questions in it for the reader to accomplish contemplate <laughs> and draw. It, it's, it's a fun read. Excellent. Good stuff. And people, I assume, can get that on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Probably many other places, too, but we all know Amazon, right? And no, Amazon is not uh, paying me to say that, but I, I guess it's like our default now, right? So we yeah, yeah, Amazon, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, all the other companies out there that have existed, you know, Amazon, I think, started in 97, right? But uh, all the, like, Walmart, Sears, I mean, a lot of them are going out of business except for Walmart. But, um, wow, what an amazing, we just, the default. But so, yeah, they can get your book. And how can they contact you? Oh, oh and also they can find my book on my website, which is Jason W. Free. W is my middle initial, jasonwfreeman.com. Jason W. Freeman.com. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like my, my name. Freeman. Yeah. And you have up so, only with a dot com at the end. Yeah. So, Jason W. I separated it, but Freeman. Dot com. Yep. And uh, so good. So, uh, all right. So excellent. So people can contact you on your website and they can, and I'm going to put all this in the description just to make sure it's spelled correctly. So we have J-A-S-O-N-W-F-R-E-E-M-A-N, right? Yeah. Dot com. And uh, so let's run that one on the bottom. So everybody, you see this now, Jason W. Freeman, right? Uh, you can certainly go to his website. You can order the book from his website, Amazon, and probably uh, many other locations. But you should definitely check Jason out. Jason, in the last you know couple of minutes, four, five, seven minutes, whatever you need, uh, is there anything that you'd like to convey to, to the audience now and in the future? Because this is going to be up on YouTube. It's going to be social media. Someone you know might stumble upon it six months from now. Who knows? So, so if you're listening to this and going through a challenge, um, I mean, I know, I know, I know it might seem overwhelming, but, but there's ways to turn challenges into opportunities. So, so just, just, um, keep going, um, Learn, learn from people about making little mindset shifts and then take small steps forward and experiment with different ways to get through it. And if one way leads to a, a, a dead end, try another way. And if that way doesn't lead where you want to go, try another way. There is a solution to your, your problems. Just... just Keep going and and keep keep working at it consistently. Okay, I love it, and that's like three feet from gold. You know, like Greg Reed talks about, and Sharon Lecter wrote that book. And uh, but like you say, you now if somebody is first of all, it's mindset. You know what I mean? You can see what you have it, it, it is limiting you, or you it, it might even be freeing you, right? But if you change your mindset on whatever it is. That allows you to open up to different possibilities because you're no longer locked into that tunnel. Uh, then if you go down a path and the path you choose doesn't you know, give you the results you want, you have learned several lessons and you've also learned one way that it doesn't work. But along the way, you've learned other things. So now you, you go and you switch and you go into a different direction, but you're more educated, you're more experienced, you have a better understanding of what does what doesn't work and sometimes the first thing you got to figure out is, is is you eliminate what doesn't work to find out i mean how often 
do is, you know, when they do research on, on a medication or, you know, rocket fuel or something, how often does somebody go in there and get it done the first time? Usually if there's multiple tries at it till you get it. Jason, you've gone from, uh, you know, having what some people would perceive to be disabilities at birth. You, uh, in, in childhood and in, in teen years, you were bullied and, uh, and then you've gone on to create amazing, you've got two uh, double majors in uh, English. You have a master's in poetry. You've given a hundred presentations. You're an author. You know, when I hear about people like you, I feel inspired, right? Because, you know, I, I certainly wasn't born with a silver spoon either, right? But it also, I, I look at other people and I say, well, what's your excuse? You know what I mean? Just get out there and try. And if it doesn't work that way, that time, you don't stop. You just keep trying am i right i mean what's our options <laughs> yeah i mean we have an option of of, of quitting and live it, living a boring life but yep. but i mean like 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 with with online advertising too i bet so, so many um pe people just quit trying online advertising because the first time it didn't quite, quite me the expectations are that like I got this it's not good but but sometimes you just have to to try try as many times as it takes to get to where you want to go that's a perfect point. And a lot of times I will have clients will say to me, well, I've tried that and it didn't work. Well, I'm like, well, what you tried didn't work. Doesn't mean online marketing, SEO, whatever the case may be. Doesn't mean that doesn't work. It just means what you tried with who you tried didn't work. So to say an entire industry and, and you know what I mean? You're right. So you just, you know, you, sometimes you just have to go in a different direction. That's why we, in my company, we perfected it to a point where we don't even charge people until after we get them the results that, that we agree to. In most cases, I mean, they have to have certain things already set up, you know what I mean? And, um, but we won't even charge them. So I love that you give that example because I hear it all the time. <laughs> You're right. It's like, oh, that doesn't work. We've heard this and that, but 11 cents of every dollar spent online is through the search engines and uh um, 89 cents rather of every dollar spent online is through the search engines that's 11 amazing cents, yeah 11 cents and that's all social media platforms combined 11 cents of every dollar so i'm not saying don't do social media uh marketing or you know uh, if you you either got to do marketing there you're not going to put up a post on your friends page and think you know you're going to make a lot of money but if you have a large group or you have uh, a large following you then maybe can you know say things in, in market uh to them but if you're just a regular user unless you're paying those platforms you're not getting any exposure of whatever your posts are so um so you're right on that uh i love it we're both giving we're both educating people so they've got to i'm not saying don't do social media but you've got to focus on the search engines and then just take what you do on the search engines cut and paste it and, and put it into social media for free so you know what I mean? And, and you know, you, you get your cake and eat it too. Jason, but this is about you, my brother. You, you're, you're an amazing person. Like I said, I met you at Habitude. Uh, Eric brought us together and I've seen you there speak several times. I think I've been to seven or eight of those in school. Wow. Yeah, and I think You've I spoke at a lot of those. Yeah, and I spoke at like five and, and the others I just attended because I just wanted to listen. And then also you start to become friends and, and the people like you, you become friends and you start, it starts to feel like you're a family and, you know, you come back home and, and you know, everybody, well, most people have a different mindset. So when you go to these events, you uh, get to be around like-minded people. So it's a, you know, it, it, it's a good feeling because most of the time we can be in a room with a hundred people and we're still alone you know what i mean so uh so it's nice but uh, again i just wanted to say thank you so much is there anything in closing you'd like to add um no th thanks so much for having me on uh, uh no.
Excellent. And this will, like I said, I, I'm going to upload and then in the next day or two, all the, and I'll send you all the clips and you feel free if you want to share them and post them and uh, comment on them and whatever. I think you're a great guy, Jason. You've done amazing things. And, and I think that pales in comparison to the amazing things that uh, you're going to do going forward. Oh, oh, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> all right, brother. You have a great day. Thank you.